It was 5.45 a.m. I put on my blue Walmart vest and got ready for another grueling day. While others were probably having a good time enjoying their weekends, I was stuck at work. Yet again, another day of putting up fake smiles and making up nice words. It had been a year in the general merchandising unit and my patience and enthusiasm for the job had gradually dropped to the absolute zeros. I had to be out there, showing all my teeth, pretending to be helpful to customers who were most of the time unappreciative. Cool, right? Changing the world one crazy smile at a time. Let's do it, I said to myself as I took one last look in the bathroom mirror before heading out. The cleaners were almost done with the aisles. In no time, we were expecting people, gathering hordes for the massive weekend sale, while I was not expecting my colleagues to show up any time now. At least I could tease them for showing up late. She got feelings for me, Rick said, ecstatically stroking his beard. Quarter past eight, and the building was buzzing. One could get lost in the sea of people gathering. I had just closed a couple of deals and I was in the cereal aisle chatting with Rick. You better not set yourself up for heartbreak, you're gonna get crushed, I gloated. We were laying claims on one of our beautiful and fit female colleagues. What the hell are you doing here? The head of the unit interrupted our mild debate with an even more superior claim. No bueno, Rick said under his breath. Get your asses going. Come on, he said. James, you go check on what that woman wants. He pointed to a mildly aged, overly plus sized woman who seemed to be, at most, 50. Obediently, I dragged myself to the scene, winking at Rick. We were far from through with our debate. Good day, ma'am, I forced a smile that defined my personality. How can I be of service to you? How I hated those words. She seemed to have a slight smile on her face, but when she looked up to see me, the smile disappeared. She didn't say a single word. She just continued scrambling for something that she obviously didn't know where it was. Uh, what are you looking for, ma'am? Uh, I can help you get it in no time. I became impatient, and my smile faded as well. Still no response. This woman was obviously lost. Uh, ma'am, if you could... Who's in charge? She cut me off with a rude snarl with an irritated look on her face. I want to speak to who's in charge. At that point, I knew I was in for a bad day. Ma'am, calm down. Uh, there's no need for that. Just tell me what you need and I'll get it. And I said to get me your boss. Her cheeks grew red. Are you deaf, asshole? She retorted. I still try to maintain a nice employee composure as I absorbed that. There's no need for that, ma'am. My tone was less cordial. Good gracious, do I need to spell it out? Get me your boss. Her face reddened even more as her voice got louder. She sighed in disappointment. I'm not getting anywhere with this douchebag. When did Walmart become an employment opportunity for the low lives and addle brains? I took another verbal hit. I began boiling on the inside. Just like I was told in anger therapy, I began taking deep breaths, hoping to get through this without another fit of rage. Ma'am, calm down. I spoke more argumentatively, trying to reason with the tantrum throwing Karen in front of me. Get me your boss, you numb nuts, she screamed. Fortunately for her, the head of my unit showed up. I knew he would side with the lady. What's the problem, ma'am? He tried sounding as polite and as nice as possible to ease the customer's anger. He gave me a displeased look. I waited with anger and desperation to know what she would say the problem was exactly. This moronic employee of yours wouldn't show me where to get my green tea, she complained, pointing at me accusingly. What the? I just couldn't take it anymore. That's not... Enough of that, James. My office. Now. My boss didn't want to hear anything I had to say. 
he had blindly sided with this irritating lady. For a moment, I wanted to hesitate and explain myself. I breathed in deep, sighed, and decided to be obedient for my job's sake. It had indeed become quite a scene, as everyone had drawn closer to see what this fat lady was ranting about. Muttonhead scum like you aren't supposed to be here. She lashed out at me one more time as I peacefully walked away from the scene. And that did it. The limit had been reached, the boiling point had been exceeded, and sparks were about to fly. What did you just say to me? I stopped and turned, not minding my boss's orders. Oh, you heard me right, scum, and you had better get... I couldn't wait for her to tell me to get going before I gave her a swinging right to the chin. There it was. My anger had found full expression. I knew there would be repercussions, but I just couldn't stand her anymore. No one could possibly stand such verbal abuse. I had tried my best to water down the fire, but she kept throwing logs into it, and she got burned real bad. A few seconds after this plus-sized woman hit the floor, two huge guys rounded me with hate in their eyes. I knew I was in trouble. Without warning, I was hit from the left, right, and center. Never again in your miserable life will you lay hands on an elderly lady, one of the men said as he stomped vigorously on my chest as I laid on the floor. I gasped in pain and anguish. At the juncture, my eyes were just about to shut by swelling around it, and blood trickled down from my nose. I lost sensation in those areas for a split second. I got really scared as I had difficulty breathing and moving and my assailants weren't done. My right pinky had been broken and my face had been numbed in pain. It took a while before security were able to arrive at the scene, but the situation at hand was beyond what they could control. Scattered shelves and two yelling adults. My manager was nowhere to be seen and these two were proving too much for security as well. Amidst the ruckus, I was able to slip away somewhere private. I knew I was going to be in trouble for this. If only that woman would have just shut up. I began wondering if she would be recovering anytime soon, because that hit was really hard for an aged woman. But even worse, I was worried about myself. I hope I didn't sustain any fatal injuries or internal bleeding of any sort. James, good God! Rick found me crouching behind one of the shelves. The look on his face was enough to show how worried he was. What happened? Long story, I sighed. Please give me some ice. Ugh, I don't want to look like a pig when the police get here. He scurried off after I had spoken and soon returned with two bags of ice. That soothed my wounds for the moment. Police arrived soon. Despite my pitiful state, I was bundled roughly, then cuffed and stuffed into the police vehicle. They treated me like some armed gang leader. I was simply trying to fight for my rights. I was kept separately from the other men who had also been arrested. The next day, the other men were fined $200 and let off the hook. The crazy woman who I had knocked out cold had pressed charges against me for third degree assault. As a 20 year old on my own, I couldn't get a good lawyer. I ended up getting class A assault instead and sentenced to a year in prison and a fine of $1,000. A bit too much for me. I served my time and was eventually released just a few days before my next birthday. This video was uploaded by a TikTok user. What in the world? It shows a mad Karen destroying a store in a fit of rage. The employee tries to help her and calm her down, but she's unstoppable. She carries on her rampage without any fear. The following is an animated story inspired from the video. The day started out peacefully. I had hopes for a good day, but it felt like a day when people would say they woke up on the right side of the bed. And I myself woke up on the right side of the bed, in a good mood. I didn't take out anger on the kids as I got them ready for school. My husband prepared breakfast, and I have never eaten anything more perfect. 
We had a nice time together that morning before he left for work, and I had busied myself with a few chores before it was time for my shift at Costco. I was eager for a fruitful and productive day. What I didn't remember was that there was always a lull before the storm. I started my shift at Costco that afternoon with a cheery smile and residual energy from the way my day had started. The store was filled with customers. Seeing so many customers around irritated me sometimes because of the workload. It was a tough job to help them and pass a smile in order to please them. I was standing behind the counter when Jada entered the mall. She was a frequent customer. I knew her because her husband was a good friend of a colleague of mine at Costco. Jada was usually a very cool lady, and I envied her charisma. But that day, there was something weird about the way she entered. I couldn't quite place it, but I noticed the difference in her demeanor, and perhaps the way she dressed. I had only a few seconds to study her before I shifted my attention back to the customer in front of me. Her hair was rolled up on her head in a bun. She was dressed in a skimpy crop top and bum shorts. It wasn't strange. People wore all manners of clothing. It was strange because of who she was. When Jada visited the store in the past, she was always collected and fully dressed in proper shoes. But her look that day resembled someone in an emergency. She walked through the store in a hurry, asking for help in finding a product from no one in particular. Perhaps our mistake was not responding to her. Maybe we considered that she was just a regular customer. Getting around wasn't supposed to be difficult, but we were wrong. She suddenly flared up and the entirety of our attention turned to her. She looked like a crazy woman to me when she threw the first item on the shelf closest to her on the floor, then another and another. I ran over to her to calm her down, but that seemed to cause a lot more harm than help. It was at that moment I realized that the peace from the beginning of the day wasn't peace at all. It was the calm before the storm. Jada was mad. We couldn't understand what made her react in that way. She was furious. She stopped and threw things on the floor and back at us. The other customers screamed as she ran past them and flung items off the shelves onto the floor. They moved away from her, unable to put her in order, and scared out of their wits. The other staff joined me in trying to calm the woman down. The store was in chaos and everyone was scared. As she displayed her anger, she repeated just one sentence. I asked for your fucking help and no one responded to me. I kept following her, hoping my big body would be an advantage and I'll be able to hold her down. Instead, she turned on me and threw items and goods at me. That was when I caught the madness in her eyes. Her eyes were red, annoyed, sparkling and fuming. I couldn't watch her eyes for long because she was back to a kicking spree. She turned on the shelves like an angry animal, kicked off more items, not caring whether the contents were liquid or solid, not caring if they were delicate like eggs. She aimed at destroying the entire store, perhaps everyone working at the store too. My attempt and the attempt of everyone else in the place was futile. She resorted to using her teeth and fingernails to cause further destruction. She destroyed the toilet papers and emptied milk cans. She threw delicate ingredients all over the place. Someone must have pissed her off. I tried to find an excuse for her behavior in my head. I could almost argue that she was possessed. Her hair was gradually getting scattered. Her legs were moving in a scattered pattern. Her eyes were lost. They resembled the eyes of a zombie fixed on its prey, empty and scary. It wasn't just Jada that scared me. It was the cleaning up, the account, and other things that we would have to do once her rioting ended. My day escalated from good to bad extremely fast. Someone must have called the police because they came in a few minutes later. Jada still wasn't calmed down. She was boiling with rage and the officers had to handle her like she was a mad woman. She kicked and jumped and fussed as they handcuffed her and dragged her out of the store. The store was a complete mess. I turned to look at what she'd done in the short period of time before the police arrived. 
The store looked like it was raided by stubborn monkeys or maybe vengeful ghosts. The toilet papers were scattered all over. The floor was wet and messy. The shelves were in disarray, and some were almost empty. My head was a mess alongside. Jada was gone, but the damage she left behind was obvious, and my head was banging. I suddenly wished I had fallen sick that day and didn't appear into work. As we bent to put the store back in order, my head was filled with the images of the woman that made the store into what it was. As I was busy cleaning the floors, my colleague, Stacy, came to me. While Jada was busy destroying the store and abusing, she had called up her friend, Jada's husband. The husband suspected that she was possessed by a ghost, her neighbor's ghost. The neighbor had died under mysterious circumstances a day earlier. Although her husband didn't say it, Stacy said that she could sense that he suspected his wife of murder. He said that she started to act strange after that occurrence. He himself was worried about his safety, and it was him who had sent the police. We cleaned the store and calculated the number of goods lost. I left work more dejected than the happy self I came in to work that day. Ever since, I made a mental note not to be encouraged by days that start so well, because they could end so bad.